By the end of today's lesson, you'll understand how to set up Autodesk Fusion, Concept of Hub, and how to navigate its user interface. I'm Mr. Pratt, and I've been teaching students CAD and robotics for over 10 years now. So hopefully, some of the things that I've been able to teach my students over the years will be able to help you learn uh, Fusion 360 or Autodesk Fusion and get up and started about as fast as my students do. I promise you that if you follow through this series, you'll be able to use Autodesk Fusion to make your own 3D designs independently for 3D printing, laser cut, robotics, and more. So let's get started. Obviously, the first thing you have to do is be able to sign in. This is going to pull up your web browser where you can simply sign into your Autodesk account or you can create an account. Once you've signed in, it's going to try to redirect you to your Autodesk uh, product where you can go ahead and open up the Identity Manager. And this should automatically sign you into Fusion 360. It's going to ask you if you want to improve your Fusion experience. You can help develop new products. Uh, I personally turn off the learning panel uh, because this is uh, an absolute beginner, the learning panel really is designed for kind of college and, and CAD experience. And I find that it ends up being a little bit confusing uh, for absolute beginners. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Now it's gonna ask us to put some data into a hub. And a hub is effectively some sort of, it's cloud-based storage for all of your projects. If you're working alone, you can make your own hub. Um, if you are working on a team, you're welcome to make a hub and then share that data across. Uh, so for me, I am going to create a new hub because I'm not actually part of another hub. And the hub can simply just be your name for now. And then if this is a personal account, I suggest you do not allow discovery um, because we don't want other people finding our work initially. So once your hub's all set up, you can select go to hub. And you'll be greeted with this original page. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, everything we're going to be doing is going to be on the design interface. Uh, well, not everything, but most things. So you can go ahead and select design and then say get started. From here, you can open up a project, create a new design, open a home uh, sample design, whatever have you. You can also click the plus tab to make a new design. For today, because we're going through the user interface, I'm going to open up a sample design because this will make it easier for me to show off some of the features. So let's get started with taking a look at the interface. Uh, the first thing you notice here is our component itself. Um, this is a box cutter. Uh, and the section in front of you, all this kind of white space, is called the canvas. The canvas is that large workspace where all of your components and pieces are created. You'll notice that it is kind of rotated around the screen. Uh, I'm doing so uh, by using the orbit tool. But you can also use the view cube in the top right hand corner. You can click and drag to be able to change yourself around at different views. You can also select individual sections to be able to see different isometric or topographic views. You can also select the home to bring back to a centered screen. Coming up here to the top left hand corner is the applications bar. Uh, the first one on here in this waffle menu is the data panel. And inside this data panel, I can see all these different projects that I've created. I have an admin project, default projects, wherever I'm saving things, I can save that as well as some sample projects that Fusion's made for me. The data panel is effectively your folder where all of your projects get saved. Closing on the data panel, if I continue along, I've got the file section, which of course is a standard menu, save, undo, redo, the Fusion home. Keeping going on further, I've got the ability to purchase Fusion. Um, because you're a high school student, you should be able to get Fusion through education access. Uh, and I'll leave a link to the description down below. Your teacher may need to do that for you though. There's also updates, notifications, and then also your username and profile. Coming below the applications bar is the toolbar itself. This is where I get all of the different features that actually make things happen in Fusion. There's solid tools, there's surfacing tools, mesh, sheet metal, plastic, utilities. This is where a lot of that magic really happens inside of Fusion 360. As sort of a quick access to the toolbar, you can also click on any uh, component or any face or edge. Right click and open up something called the marking menu. And the marking menu, you notice, has uh, similar features to our toolbar up at the top, but allows us to select kind of more contextual pieces for the sections that it is that I'm looking at. Uh, and oftentimes you can find the Fusion smart enough to know that there are some specific things that you might want to do. Coming back into the canvas, on the left hand side, you'll see a panel here called the browser. The browser is an organization of all of your parts and tools inside of your assembly. So you notice that I've got left and right sections, grips, uh, blades, blade cradles. I can go ahead and toggle individual components uh, by showing and hiding them. I can also open them up and you'll see that there's different origin points and different bodies for each individual component as well. So if there were multi-part bodies, I would see 
multiple bodies, I see decals, um, things like that. So the browser is effectively how you organize any sort of sketches, constructions, canvases, joints. Uh, we'll talk all about this as the tutorial series continues. And the last thing about Fusion down here is the parametric timeline. Uh, inside this parametric timeline, it's effectively a history to be able to go back in time and see what it is your project is doing. So if I click this little play button, we'll notice that it's actually going to show us all the steps that these designers took to be able to make this initial sample box cutter design. So you can see that they're slowly starting to build this design up over time. Cool thing about this uh, parametric modeling is that allows you to go back and edit specific features. So if you find there's a feature on here that you don't like, you wanna change the size of things, you can actually go ahead and do that. So I can actually go in and edit this original sketch. I can, let's say I wanna make my box cutter even bigger. I wanna have a 30 millimeter blade and I wanna have a much smaller radius on my tool here. And I can, let's make their tool a little bit longer. When I finish the sketch, you'll notice that Fusion's actually gonna auto compute a lot of our stuff. Now, some of the stuff's gonna look a little weird because obviously I just kind of dragged it out, but I've got a small radius here. I have a much bigger box cutter. Uh, and then some things kind of got a little funky, um, but the timeline does allow you to go back and fix and change and edit things um, quickly over time. We'll just revert those changes. And that's a quick introduction to the Fusion interface. Next lesson, we'll get into the basic workflow of Fusion and how you can actually start making your own parts uh, in a very simplistic way. Uh, and by the end of the tutorial, we should be able to make ourselves a custom bracket so that we can mount a different piece to our uh, robot that might be at a different angle that you may not be able to purchase on an off-the-shelf part. So I hope you learned something today and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.